and we cannot escape the past. Ethan, this mission of yours is gonna cost you. Ever since I saw the featurette of you on the motorcycle, I've been wanting to ask you this question. Yes. There's a moment before you go on the first run and you look off to the end of the ramp and you go, <sighs> yes. do you remember this moment? Yes. What was that? Okay, it was two things. Okay. One, it was, okay, I'm gonna do this. I did feel that emotion. It's like, really? okay, let's go. Because it, I didn't know what was gonna happen. And it was the first day of filming. Look, I've spent years preparing for this. It's yeah. not just, not just the years prepping and figuring it out, but I've been riding motorcycles since I was a little kid, been parachuting, training, constantly developing kind of, for years, oh. developing, developing knowledge, developing technology on how to shoot these things and really how to tell a story. It's not just capturing an image, but it's how do we tell a story? So when I was on the ramp, I was thinking, we're gonna see how this goes. You know, be cute. I talked about it. I know the camera. As that as that helicopter's going across, he we had to be in sync because he could have blown me off yeah. that ramp. So his his timing, my speed had to be perfect to adjust the camera. So I was I everything the rhythms of everything we had to do and everything we trained. Now's the moment where I'm going off the cliff, and and I'm thinking of performance. And it was also it was a nod. It also was a cue to tell everyone I'm about to go. Okay. So it was keying off everyone. I called my own action. So they said action, but no one went. I had to find something where I didn't take my hands off the bike. Like I couldn't give a hand signal. And I also wanted to be part of performance where you just see my head went down. I went like that, that, that told the helicopter I'm going. It told the drones I'm going. And so all of that timing came off. And once I did that, I had to release a bike. So I go like that, and that's the moment I must release the bike. Otherwise, all of the, everything's, the sink is going to be off. And it would also affect just the, you know, the dynamics of doing something like that. The downdraft from the helicopter, where the position of the drone is going to be, all the camera operators, so that when I'm going off and, you know, yeah. You finally flew without happened. a plane. I know, it was amazing. Speaking of McHugh, he told a little story that after the first he could tell screening, a good story. he tells a great story. After the first screening of every Mission Impossible film, you yes. whisper in his ear and you say, We can do better. <laughs> not just every Mission Impossible movie. It's just Mission Impossible? No, not it's every, everything. Every movie we make, I look at it and I'm watching and say, We can do better. Even Top Gun, even Maverick. Always. Do you think you can make a better Maverick? Oh, I think I can. Are you going to? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. Yeah. So, how do you, when you say after Fallout, how did you improve on it? Because I do really believe, I just watched the entire series in succession, I do really believe that you have improved on every single one, but how do you do that as a filmmaker and as an actor? And then how are you gonna do that for the second part of this one? You know, we're always looking at how, it's a story, is it immersive? Yeah. I'm, I'm every, since I was a kid, I've studied movies, I've studied studios, distribution, traveled the world and watched films with audiences all over the world, their movies and their culture and my films to see how they translate. And I'm always going, how can I hone a story to, to make it as immersive as possible? And with each one, I'm constantly learning. The amazing thing about this art form, the amazing thing about this life is that you're constantly learning. It's both fantastic and terrible, you know what I mean? You're like, oh my gosh, you know? And, and we're constantly pushing it to that next level, not just with stunts, but story. How can we, with the resources that we have, give a give a, a a better experience or an immersive experience for an audience so those things it and it's just like i'm going i'm not going to try to compete but all the things that, you, that i've learned in terms of character development um story structure how to you know filming you know we're all i'm always challenging myself on a daily basis and my crew and McHugh and i back and forth going really thinking in terms of just what's connecting me to the story or not, what's connecting me to the environment or not. So here we are shooting in Rome and, and also looking at the city and not trying to put something in that is a forcing the geography. We're going, what's, this, what's the geography telling us? What, is, what story can we tell? And you have an actress like Haley Atwell, when we, you know, someone who we've admired for many years and thought when, when we were thinking of this movie, when, you, when we meet her, we're going, what story can we tell with mm -hmm. Ethan? And we knew, you know, we wanted to go in back more into the history and, and pull up Henry Cerny and, and, and really, you just felt the, the movie wanted to do it. And 
I had felt that the franchise had earned it. So those are the things that I'm, I'm constantly, constantly looking. Like for me, it's, you know, and I'm, I don't know how many films I've produced. I don't know how many films I've overseen, uh, but that is how I feel about it. I want, I want to not just say, I'm going to try to outdo myself, but going, what is this story? And how can I take this kind of story? And from my knowledge of audiences, global audiences, how can I tell the story in the same manner, but engage a broader audience as best I can. You've been running a movie since 1981. Two of my favorite runs are in this one, and you do a lot of running in this one. It was actually- McHugh just has me it? running. Every time he's like, I can, you, you, and, they, and they're getting longer. They are, but they're that's my longer. question. We all see you run. We all enjoy you running. Your fans Thank love you, you running, much. but how do you actually train for it? Because you're training for, do you do have personal bests that you up? You're grinning now because it's like- <laughs> <laughs> It's a very good question because, yeah, it's interesting because I have to go through it and I'm, look, just as an actor and in my life, I've always trained just to make movies because the endurance and the, you know, I train in many things, singing, dancing, you know, motorcycles, cars, and also in my personal life, I like doing, I like skydiving and speed flying and all these things. And I like to then go learn these things and then apply it to the movies. But it's a, it is a real trick and I, I have gone through to figure out how do I train, how do I maintain, how do you hit peak right at the moment? Because also when I'm, when I'm doing a sprinting scene, I don't just run once. I have to run, oh, like sometimes I've done 50 sprints in one day, which is, so I have to think about what the recovery time is, what scenes I'm shooting before and after, and, and I've gotten better at really structuring things within the film and sitting down and going, I, here's, because I have to prepare for the jump off the motorcycle. So there's certain things and you're using different, your body in a different way, or if I'm doing gymnastics or a fighting scene, you know, you don't want to do a fight right there when I'm going to sprint. And how do I prepare and how do I recover? Uh, and also the hours that I work, I work seven days a week yeah. and I'm producing. So it's, it's just a, you know, and everything else that we were dealing with during this time period, it was, you know, but I, I enjoy the, I have to say, I enjoy the pressure. I do enjoy the challenge. But I realized like I woke up, I, you know, and I, I enjoy this. I like putting myself through in, in these kinds of situations. Well, last question. I heard you just say, you never think it's big enough. Yes. <laughs> The next couple of stunts, McHugh gave me a little tease. He says the last shot in this one sets up one of the stunts in the next one, which we can assume what that is. But we've also seen shots of you out on the plane, walking out on the plane. Did you go bigger in this one than in- I, I can't tell you. <laughs> I can tell you we went bigger. I shouldn't tell you that. I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. You could That's tell me you could just Top hurt Gun. me a little bit. <laughs> That's a line from Top Gun. But in this one then, yeah. which one of the three sequences do you think was the biggest in terms of as a producer and actor? Uh, you know what, each one has been very challenging. Each one was really fun because look, we built the train. The train is real. We had to build the train to put it down a track, to send it off the track, all of this stuff. And, and also what I enjoy is, you know, this, the action that I do with Palm and with Haley, the driving through here, the streets on the cobblestone, one hand, and McHugh's like, you're gonna have, you're gonna be handcuffed. I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. So I'm practicing drifting, and the Fiat had a very, you know, small wheelbase, so it would catch on the cobblestones, and Haley and I are in the car together as we're doing it. Each one had a different kind of adventure about it, yeah. and and a different challenge. Always with motorcycles, it's it's challenging because you're looking at it, but I don't have pads, so I can I rehearse all the jumps and everything with the pads and high speed, and I'm always going very very high speed, so. Uh, that stuff's always, even though they're little small jumps, you know, the things that I'm doing ahead of time, they're always a little tricky, little, you know, rocks and different things like that. So it's never boring. Every morning there was, there was a bit of adventure. And also the, the base jumping that we did, you can see in the EPK, you can see me jumping out of the helicopter. I was testing the wind inside the bowl. And it wasn't just once I get off the ramp, it's still, I have to, once I open, the challenge is I have to open in a manner that if I'm, destabilized in any way, the chute will open in, in, in different ways. And they packed it beautifully for me. And it was very important that I always had the same team with me. But, I, and you could see, I opened and the parachute opened in a way that threw me into the side of the mountain. And I'm, and you could see I'm just, you have to really be ready that when it opens, that if I'm this, and I was about this close to the, to the side of the mountain, that you pull the, you know, you get the parachute like very quickly, it. very quickly away from not dragging the any piece of the parachute on the rock. So every day there was some 
there was there was a challenge which I like, plus performance, plus, you know, it's not just about me, mm -hmm. it's about our whole cast and really, that's why we're happy to put the, uh, <laughs> the bike jump out because they thought they saw it and they've never seen it. You won't see it until you see the movie. And there's another shot that's, that has, I'm, we're so low as I'm getting to the ground, it's right over me as I'm going very low to the ground. You can see that shot there. To get that shot was, was very interesting. And we know that we're happy to send that out because we know we have the whole train. We know you have the whole, you know, horses in the beginning. You know, all the horseback riding, all of that stuff in the desert, the sandstorm. And My favorite moments with you, as much as we love the big moments, the Ethan quiet moments, you need that yeah. balance in the film. Yeah, and I do. love that McHugh will linger on a shot yeah. just long enough. You'll tell the team, I got it and there'll be that little bit of doubt. So how yeah. much joy do you still get into those quiet moments, all as much it. as you love the big moments? You know, Ev, I love all of the moments. I, I have to say all of those moments. And also when I see the other actors and we're constantly working with them to, what's in, what, what I love in movies, I want vivid characters. It's not, it's, not, it's not about me, it's about the story. And it's about how do we tell the story to engage an audience into an emotional story and a character journey. And there's this other stuff that we have. There's another, there's, it's the amount of time that we spend finding the story, finding those yeah. moments with the characters, and not just for myself, but the other actors and developing that stuff. That's what engages me. And then I want to thrill the audience also with these other things, because if you don't have that, it doesn't matter how big it is. If I'm not invested in the story and invested with the characters, and that, that is primary for us. And that's what keeps the franchise going. It's not just the stuff. Yeah, and just right? movies and why I want to yeah. see movies. I want to care about the people. I want to be interested in the world. I want to be interested in those people. That is movies. I'm using all of the skills that I, and the things that I love in cinema, and all of the dramatic and comedic and all those films and the character development that we have, and we're looking and I'm developing that with all the actors and then putting it, all we're doing is putting a big landscape on top of that. Right. That's all. It's, you know, from any other kind of movie that I've done, how do you have that emotion while you're juggling? How do you have that? The thing with this movie that I, when you're looking at the Fiat and you're looking at Haley and I, we're playing those scenes in a two shot. Now, we don't have a bunch of takes that we can do. Those characters have to be connected and you have to find those moments like that. And that kind of skill, to be able to play that kind of moment and comedy that normally I get to have in a Jerry Maguire yeah. or a Rain Man, or you cocktail. know, or a cocktail, where you have that, you're on the ground, you're doing that. We're doing it at high speed and having it feel organic because it is organic, it's happening now, but you have to have actors that, first we have to get them used to that kind of speed and that kind of sp pace and that kind of action. Now, you know, the scene on the train, it's like, you trust me, no. Those, those mm -hmm. kind of character moments that are real, that invest me in these people. And that's the thing, always with, with Ethan, I was like, look, the key with this character, and people are like, oh, you know, no, he does this. It's like, he doesn't want to have to do that. He has to do it. And, you know, when he's about to go off that cliff, he and what he's thinking about, what's interesting and what's what, what I want in it is that emotional investment as to why he's doing it. We understand. It's not just ta-da. We're not going ta-da. It's the it's story that's getting us there. And anyone that understands that level of performance, that level of storytelling, understands like I could have that it's the same kind of emotional investment that you have in a movie that we're shooting in a room. And that's, that's what I'm always looking for. I'm looking for audience engagement, character audience engagement with that. And, and telling our story, we're not altering our story or, or what I want to do, but there's many different ways where I can, I can push an audience away or I can pull them into my story and I can pull them into a character. And those are the things that you know, I've played supporting roles and I've played the lead roles. So I, I know structurally every aspect of how to draw, how to draw an audience in and when do I want to draw them in and, and when do I want to push them away, you know, with those different kinds of characters. And that's, that's constantly the evaluation um, as we're going through it. So it's not just, as an actor, I'm not going, it is character development and it's, it's but it's the whole, it's the whole story. It's every actor in there. You know, when we're casting the actors, it's we're looking at them going, OK, what how do I celebrate their talent? Which is, you know, in old Hollywood, they would look people and it's like and they built 
performances for them. That's what I do. If you look at my movies all the way back when I was a young actor, you look at Risky Business, you look at A Few Good Men, you look at Rain Man, you look at these movies. My, my taste and my development is looking at actors and celebrating them and that it's, it's us together and how, where do I put that camera? How do we write these lines? How do we develop it in a manner that is immersive for an audience? You know, because then you're seeing all these great characters. And that's, those are the kind of movies I love. And those, those are the kind of movies that I try to and aspire to make. So you're like the old lady that gave you the quarter. You're giving the quarter back. That's it. You know that story. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. That's it. That's exactly it.